What's up guys? Welcome to the first episode of Shit's Broke. I'm the Equipment Guru and this is a Duramax XP12000EH. It's propane, it's gasoline, it's a decent generator. Customer brought it in, bought it a few months ago, I think in May. It's uh, July right now. It still has a tag on it, it's brand new. Um, it says it stopped making power unfortunately. Um, usually not the best issue to deal with. It can be costly. So we're gonna take a look at it today. I'll show you how to diagnose, how to figure out what's actually wrong with it instead of just throwing parts at it. Um, so let's get to it. Let's go over a couple things before we actually get started on working on this unit. You need a couple basic tools. I use an impact with a quarter inch driver. You don't need it. You could use a socket wrench, whatever. Metric sockets, basic quarter inch. You really only need a seven, an eight, a 10, maybe a 12 sometimes, that's it. Not, not a big deal. Cheap multimeter. This one is Amazon special. I've been using it for years. It is good enough. It works. It does clamp and rush AC, DC, anything you need it for. Talk about a couple different types of generators before we get into it. Let y'all kind of understand how it works. There's two different kinds. You have a brushless and a brushed generator. Um, if you have a brushless generator, this is all you're going to see inside of it. It is a capacitor not too much to it. This is a brushed generator. It has a voltage regulator. So it has two main components other than the electrical head. You have some brushes. I don't know how you can see that, but I'll show you later. And you have an ADR. So you see, these are the brushes. So it's got these little spring loaded contacts. These will wear out over time. Typically that's the biggest problem. Then you have a voltage regulator. Got a couple plugs on it. Some of them look different. Some are smaller, some are bigger. Anyway. All right, so here's the back of the generator. Most of them look pretty similar to this. They may be plastic, metal, red, black. They're all the same thing. They're all main chime. All right, most of the time, you got two screws right here. Pop them off. can easily identify some of the components in here so as you can see this right here that's your ABR your voltage regulator like I was talking about your brushes they're gonna be back over here right there they're hidden in there so after we get the cover off we look inside you're probably not gonna see anything if it's black might as well throw it away because you can, that's it there's a couple tests we're gonna do. First, we're gonna check on the brushes, see if they're melted, falling apart, whatever. Um, second test is to um, do a resistance testing on the rotor and stator. Uh, we'll go over that too. Um, but those are the, the two main components to check whenever you're making sure, or checking to see why you're generating. We're, um, we're gonna do a resistance check on the rotor and the stator. We'll do the rotor first. All right, so what you want to do is take your meter, stick it in there so you can touch both of the brush edges. Let me see if I can get a good shot of that. It's kind of hard. You got the red on one side, the black on the other side of the brush. Then you're going to take your meter, set it to resistance, which is a little horseshoe shape thing. And then right now it's telling us 55, 55 ohms. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. That tells us two things. First thing, brushes are touching the actual rotor itself. And it also tells us there's not, probably not a short. Now that you got that measurement taken care of, we know that your stator is, or your rotor is probably okay. Anywhere between the range of 25 to 150, give or take, is good enough. Um, that, that'll get you in the ballpark. Um, so the next thing to do is actually check out the stator. Um, stator, stationary rotor, is what turns. Uh, next step is so going to be checking that. the actual stator itself. Um, it's a pretty basic test. Uh, if you're worried about taking any of the wires loose, just take a picture. It's not that hard. You can mix colors, put it back together, it, it'll be all right. Um, yeah, there's essentially two main windings inside. You want to check them to see if they're not shorted out against each other. 
pretty simple. We're gonna do the same test. Multimeter, put that dude on resistance. Okay. And there are a couple sets of wires in here, okay? You have these two right here. You can tell they're, they're pretty much in the same loom together. This is one of the legs. And then you have this one, it's another set. They get screwed onto these terminals right here. So you can see them. You just make sure they're separated from the, the wires that are already here. I did that off camera just so I don't, whatever. So um, if you put your meter on these two leads, check it. Put your meter on these two leads and check them. And then check one of them to the actual, any part of the metal on the generator. So one to the metal, the other one, one to the metal. And then you should get a couple different readings. Talked about as far as testing the stator through the brushes, testing the rotor, like we said. If you don't have a short to ground, you're not reading 0, 0.0 ohms on the actual um, stator itself, then you can go into looking at a couple other things. There's not much more to it. Um, if the back of the generator is like black, obviously you know there's a problem. If not, if everything looks good inside of there, nice and copper colored. Mm. It's probably one of these two cheap parts. A set of brushes is five bucks. AVR, if you buy OEM, maybe $50 or something like that. You can get them on Amazon. They're not the most reliable on there, but if you're just trying to throw a part at it to test it, go ahead. You know, um, I would say out of all the electrical failures I have that come in through the door, um, I would say AVR is 60% probably. Brushes, maybe another 30, and then Ultimately, head failures is the last um, 5%, which is unfortunate because it costs more to replace that part than it is to just buy another generator. So, I mean, if you can even find the part, you're looking at five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand um, dollars $800,000 just for either a stator and a rotor combo, that type of stuff. Um, there is another thing that you can check um, to if you really want to get into troubleshooting instead of just spending 25 bucks on Amazon on an AVR to throw at it or a set of brushes, you can actually check the two wires coming out of the AVR. So like I said, you have the AVR here. Typically it's gonna be white and red. It'll be two, it'll have the little disconnects on it. Um, when the generator is running and you unplug these before it's running, obviously, um, you should be getting some sort of DC power out. Uh, that's going to be anywhere between 5, 6, 10, 12 volts. If you're getting DC voltage out of there, AVR is probably good. If you're not getting DC voltage out of there, you're going to have two problems. Um, first is either, yeah, AVR is bad, no big deal. Second problem is actually what this generator has. Um, I've had this one for a little while. Um, it was a warranty replacement. I already know what's wrong with it. I diagnosed a little while ago. Um, unfortunately, there is a small coil inside of the stator that controls the voltage regulator, essentially. It tells it what to do, and that coil is burned up on it. And, um, you know, like I said, unfortunately, it's you got to replace a whole part, and right now you can't get them for this actual generator. So. That's that. That's pretty the, pretty much the quick and easy diagnostic to it. Um, I know uh, there's a lot of other videos on YouTube where they'll put a drill on it and spin it backwards. That doesn't work for all generators. It only works for brushless, like I said, with the capacitor inside. That's brushless. AVR generators, there's no point. You're just wasting your time. Um, so, and it, that does work. The drill method does work on brushless generators. It can. I have done it personally myself. Um, customer will bring me one before they even get it off the truck. I'll put my deal on it, make it run, and it blows their mind. It does work on brushless. Brushless, not voltage regulator like this. Um, Y'all can hang out and I'll explain a little bit more on some of the more technical stuff if you want. If not, whatever. See y'all next time. But I'm going to go over some more of the detailed so part. Main components of the actual generator. If y'all want to get nerdy about what this stuff does, how it works, this is the part for you. All right, so there's, like I said, there's two main parts. You have a stator that is stationary. This is a 60 pound, sometimes 50, 40 pound chunk of steel and copper. It's got windings inside of it. This is the actual rotor. This goes inside. This is what hooks up the engine on this end. It's got a fan for cooling, whatever. 
um, and it has the uh, two poles on it. Um, up here, I'll get a better shot. These two right here are your slip rings. This is what your brushes touch, okay? Um, as you can see, this one's kind of black. Um, so over time, those brushes will wear down. Um, they're designed to, to go out eventually. So um, usually when I press brushes, I clean these. Um, so always check your slip rings and always check your brushes. So like I said, your slip rings, that's where you're gonna check to see if you have 50, 25, 100 ohms, like I said. Um, pretty simply how the system works. This spins, the voltage regulator puts a varying amount of current into it. This turns into a big magnet, essentially, and um, that excites the coil on the stator itself, which makes power. Um, I don't know if in elementary school in science y'all did the deal where you take the battery and the coil, wire and the magnet, and you can make the, you know, the light and all that other kind of stuff. Um, essentially the same thing on a bigger scale. Um, there's some other wires in here, like I was talking about, the ones that actually control the AVR. Um, the AVR reads the output voltage. It also gets its input from the stator itself. Talk about uh, is this car right here. This is like my number one favorite tool out of all time. I've had this thing for years. I'm telling you, this is like the best thing that a guy in my business could use. It's a hydraulic cart. Um, it will go up to about 36 inches. You can get it at Harbor Freight. This thing, you can put a generator on it, lawnmowers or whatever. You can load stuff into the back of trucks with it because it's, like I said, it's hydraulic. It has a pump on it. Um, you can make it go up and down, whatever. There's no more bending over or working on it on the floor. This is like the best work tool, workbench, whatever you want to call it. So, all right, guys, we're going to talk about one more thing, um, and that's going to be inverter generators. We're talking about the small, quiet camping generators. Honda makes them, Predator, almost everybody makes them now. The small boxes enclosed. Um, everything that we talked about today does not work for inverter generators. It's, they're a whole nother beast. Um, I'll go through one um, maybe in a couple weeks, um, explain how they work. Um, not a lot you can do when those things feel bad. So y'all can check that out one next time. Thank y'all for watching the first episode of Shit's Broke. Uh, this is the Equipment Guru. Check us out next time. Thanks.